Sex trafficking in the U.S. is big business for some, with pimps often training the next generation to take over and continue exploiting others. Marley Hall traveled to Milwaukee, a city known as Pimp School, and talked to people who are trying to break that cycle. These prostitutes are working the streets of Milwaukee, a growing hub for sex trafficking. Two-thirds of the pimps arrested in a nationwide FBI sting two years ago were from Wisconsin. We're going to be out here looking for you. We walked with Chandra Cooper through Milwaukee's west side on a late-night crusade to rescue victims of forced prostitution. Get you some food. I just feel like it's my purpose and uh, my mission to see them out of this and to help them as much as I can. Nancy Yarborough works with Chandra. She used to walk these streets herself after becoming her boyfriend's paycheck when she was just 17. How did you get from a point where you had a romantic interest in a guy to having sex with other people so he could get money? It's the coercion part because you want to please somebody enough and because you believe that this is actually going to please him. Police in Milwaukee have more than 200 pimps on their radar but few resources. How come you only have three detectives assigned to sex trafficking? Because I don't think people really realized how big it was until just recently. And again, so that's why I'm working as hard as I can to get more investigators. This undercover detective says Milwaukee has earned the nickname Pimp School. The fathers teach their sons, teach their nephews. A well-established pimp can make $500,000 on one girl in one year. We just want to help the women. Chandra Cooper is breaking that cycle. She set up Grateful Girls, an organization to rescue victims of sex trafficking. My dad was a pimp. My dad was a violator. I live this, I breathe this, and I have to keep going. But it's hard to change a culture one person at a time. Come on down to 26th Street, okay? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Bye-bye. And Marley Hall joins us now to talk about this story. Marley, as you were out there on the streets with, uh, with, with the people in Milwaukee, what surprised you most about your experience there? That the women and girls I saw on the street did not look like prostitutes. They were there in jeans and sneakers and some of them so young. Not what you would envision a prostitute to look like and to know that these women were being victimized I think for a lot of people is very shocking. Yeah to hear their stories is just absolutely incredible to think that like you pointed out she was doing it for a boyfriend to make mm -hmm. him money and she said to get the love in return it just seems like a vicious cycle that these women end up getting in. How did Milwaukee end up becoming kind of this hotbed for sex trafficking? There is a lot of economic disparity in Milwaukee, and the unemployment rate is also very high. And some say that's the reason, because sex trafficking can provide a means of survival for pimps and for their victims. But law enforcement officials that I spoke to, they say that it is such a problem in Milwaukee because of the nature mm. of pimp culture there. It is so embedded and sophisticated and organized. In fact, court documents show that convicted Milwaukee pimps describe pimp round tables where they get together and share best practices and advice and, and tips on how to evade law enforcement. Oh. So it's it's very, very sophisticated. Hard to break that cycle. That's shocking. Marlena, we just put up a heat map of cases in the United States, and it was really interesting to see where those have been reported. Milwaukee police say they have few resources, but you see uh, red spots in the Northeast, in Southern California, Seattle, and Florida. What are the resources and the response? like nationwide to this issue. Sadly, Milwaukee has more resources than most cities in the U.S. because it is such a big problem there. In fact, sex trafficking task forces are funded by the Department of Justice. And last year, Milwaukee received a grant of $600,000. That may seem like a lot, but mm -hmm. when you compare it to the problem, it really isn't. To put it in perspective, Milwaukee police have identified more than 200 pimps. Those are pimps who have had some kind of contact with law enforcement. And every girl can generate about half a million dollars a year for any given pimp. And most pimps have four to six women or girls in their so-called stable. So pimps far outnumber police and they have a lot more resources too. Oh, absolutely, that's scary. Great reporting, Indeed. Marley, thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Marley.